Hard banding has long been a sore point between operators and contractors. Contractors, for their part, desire protection for their tool joints on costly drill pipe. But to the operator, hard banded tool joints are destructive to casing. This was especially true when tungsten carbide was the dominant hard banding material. Today, casing friendly alloys are displacing tungsten carbide, but do these solutions really protect tool joints? This virtual panel discussion, graciously sponsored by Hard Banding Solutions, is entitled Selecting Casing Friendly Hard Banding Alloys for Minimum Tool Joint and Casing Wear. Our guests will discuss today's hard banding materials and practices. We will also look at differences between alloys, applications and reapplications, and more. Hi, I'm Mike Kilalia with IADC and DrillingContractor.org. I'll briefly introduce our panelists by name, job title, and company, leaving their full bios for later. Our first speaker is Bob Miller, materials engineer for Postal Industries, the parent company of hard banding solutions. Bob will set the stage for us and provide an overview of hard banding. Following Bob, we'll hear from Steve Stefancic, head of marketing and compliance for Postal. Steve will discuss the value of hard banding to drilling contractors and operators, as well as cover application and customer support. And then our third speaker, Jim Allen, is co-owner of Allen Inspection Services. Jim will share with us experience in reapplying hard banding. Please take a moment during the webcast or afterward to post questions for the panel. While we can't answer questions in real time, the panelists will prepare responses, which we'll post later on in the page. We'll shoot you an email when the responses are live. So first, let's shed some light on the hard banding puzzle with our first speaker, Bob Miller. Bob is a materials engineer with Postal Industries, which he joined in 2000. Bob is responsible for technical support for hard banding solutions customers, vendors, and postal technical centers. He also authors procedures and technical documentation, conducts presentations, and handles numerous special hard banding projects. Prior to joining Postal, Bob worked as a hard-facing metallurgist for welding alloys and tricon metals. He also spent 16 years as a welding researcher for Teledyne McKay. While he was there, he authored three patents related to hard facing. Bob is currently seeking additional hard banding patents. He received a Bachelor of Science degree in Materials Science from the University of Bridgeport and pursued postgraduate studies in metallurgical engineering at New York University. Bob, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mike. Let me begin by giving you a thumbnail sketch of who we are and what we do. Postal Industries is headquartered in Cleveland, Ohio. We have over 40 years experience in producing hard facing products for many different applications. This includes hard banding products which uh, were introduced several years ago. Postal Industries has become a leader in hard banding technology and continues to improve and contribute to the oil field. As previously mentioned, Postal Industries has a vast experience in formulating and providing wear resistant products in various industries including foundation drilling, mining, road building, dredging, agriculture, construction, forging, steel production, logging, recycling, energy and power, and of course what we are here for today, the oil field. When it comes to formulating for welder appeal, abrasion resistance, production rates, or a host of other welding parameters, Postal Industries has pioneered well over 200 alloys. So what's the difference between hard banding and hard facing? Really, the only difference is the industry. Only the oil field differentiates between hard facing and hard banding. Hard banding is really a hard facing application. On the left is what we commonly refer to as hard banding. Hard banding only pertains to tubular products. The stabilizer on the right uses a much more abrasive resistant alloy than the hard banding shown on the left. The environments are quite different and require a different approach to the two applications. So how is hard banding applied? Hard banding is accomplished using metal inert gas or better known as MIG welding. Let me explain that process. Power supply, shown in blue, converts AC power to DC power. The positive line, shown in red, is connected to the welding torch. The negative is connected to the tool joint. A spool of hard banding wire is mounted and fed down through a set of feed rolls, 
which is governed by a simple dial indicator shown in green. Most wires require gas shielding, also shown in green, which is connected to the torch. When the contactor is thrown, the wire is fed and the arc is initiated, producing a desirable weld bead. Adjustments in spindle speed or wire speed may be necessary to form the desired weld profile. Generally speaking, each bead or band is approximately one inch wide. Box ends usually require three inches of hard banding, while the pin end requires about an inch and a half. As you can see, by polishing with a wire brush, the hard banding becomes clean and quite presentable. This is not just for appearance, but to aid in visual and magnetic particle inspection process. This graphic depicts the proud hard banding locations on the pin and box, including the taper. Please note that the taper is recessed and not proud. Many initial applications of hard banding are done slightly recessed, while reapplications are always hard banded proud. Hard banding the taper is becoming less popular because of a noticeable lack of wear in this particular location. This is a typical drill collar, which the box and pin are hard banded. Note that the length of hard banding can be considerably more than drill pipe tool joints and appear in a number of different locations. This is a typical heavyweight drill pipe where hard bandings are specified on the pin and box tool joints. The center wear pads have been the center of attention lately because of a controversy surrounding past cracking problems with competitive hard banding products. Postal has many customers who hard band the center wear pads and have done so successfully for many years. Through a recent change by a major inspector, the procedure now allows for any hard banding that is crack free. Duraband is the only hard banding product on the market today that guarantees it to be crack free. Let's review the prior use of tungsten carbide hard banding. In the age of shallow and straight wells without casing, it was common to apply mild steel wire together with tungsten carbide particles. The particles are carefully metered into the weld puddle, but not the arc. This process was used extensively until deeper and horizontal wells came about in the last few years, as we shall see in a later slide. These types of hard bandings had catastrophic consequences within case holes. The newer and harsher drilling conditions call for more casing-friendly products, such as DuraBand. This is a typical tungsten carbide deposit. Note the fine tungsten carbide particles on the surface. The matrix wire is used in the past was a solid model steel product. But many savvy individuals in the oil field are now specifying that the matrix wire be Duraband. This results in an outstanding combination of wear resistant matrix combined with an outstanding properties of tungsten carbide and used only below the casing. This graphic illustrates the very basics in the Moore Engineering Casing Wear Test located in Houston, Texas. Quite simply, a tool joint with hard banding is loaded into a fixture that houses the specified casing. The tool joint is then rotated at 155 RPM while at the same time a mud solution of 7% sand is continuously fed onto the rotating tool joint. A 3,000 pound load is also applied while the tool joint is rotating. The test runs for eight hours and stop periodically to check the depth of wear in the casing and the tool joint. Valuable data, such as a casing wear number or factor, torque, friction, and tool joint wear, just to name a few, are collected and reported. Allow me to elaborate on the use of tungsten carbide in case holes. The casing wear test verified the problems noted in the field when tungsten carbide was used in cased holes. As mentioned, the casing wear test is an eight hour test. The mild steel and tungsten carbide lasted only 15 minutes. The result of this test convinced many operators and drilling contractors to ban tungsten carbide hard banding products in any cased hole, or in some cases, any hole, and embrace the casing friendly products such as DuraBand. Comparative casing wear test data of competitive hard bandings is very difficult to come by under the current Moore Engineering Protocol. 
However, Postal has tested Duraband a number of times, and in this slide, it shows comparisons of the casing wear factors. And as you can see, Duraband is superior over Toughband, which is another postal hard banding product, and certainly over the bare tool joint. Please keep in mind that this is a laboratory test and cannot be compared to actual field results, as we shall see in the later slide. Why hard band anyway? This is answered by detailing a recent event that occurred in North Dakota. The customer was drilling 10,000 feet down and 10,000 feet horizontally. No hard banding was initially done on the drill string. After one hole, the tool joints were severely worn. It was then decided to hard band the box and pin with Duraband. The drilling rig went on to drill not one, not two, not three, but an additional six holes at the same configuration without reapplication of the hard banding. A hard banding load saved thousands of dollars for the drilling contractor, not to mention precious time. So it pays to hard band. In another case, the drill string comprised of heavyweight drill pipe, hard banded with mild steel and tungsten carbide. This combination typically wore out at 40,000 feet. Upon substituting Duraband for the mild steel, and again using tungsten carbide, the life of the drill string increased to more than 200,000 feet. So it pays to hard band and to choose wisely in selecting hard banding products. This is the end of my slide presentation. However, I trust it will be the beginning of a new understanding of hard banding in a hard banding process. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Does more engineering run casing wear tests under different loads and types of mud? Yes, they do. It's, it's quite common for them to run 5,000, 7,000 uh, pounds of side load along with um, different types of mud other than just water-based mud. Synthetic muds are often used. Okay. Also, I heard you use the term proud. I'm not really certain I know what that means in this context, but uh, so if you could explain that for us. And also, uh, I think I heard you say that the initial application goes on recessed, but subsequent but reapplications go on proud. Why, why is that? Well, apparently the, uh, the recessed part of it for a brand new pipe is restricted by the outside diameter of the hole. So if something goes wrong, and they have to get down there and fish, then they need to, uh, to have that room. So it's recessed back. In other words, there's only about a sixteenth of an inch or a thirty-second of an inch of uh, proud hard banding, which means standing above and beyond the outside diameter mm -hmm. of the tool joint. Okay. Like proud Mary or something. Like proud Mary. Now that the stage is set and we've learned the basics of hard banding, let's examine the specific advantages that hard banding solution brings to the industry. Our next speaker is Steve Stefansik. Steve heads marketing and compliance for Postal Industries, which he joined in 2006. His responsibilities have included advertising, customer field sales, trade show management, and hard banding technical support and compliance. Prior to Postal Industries, Steve spent 30 years in product development and operations management for the maintenance, repair, and operations industry, also known as MRO. Steve, take it away, please. Thank you, Mike. As Bob mentioned earlier, hard banding of drill pipe tool joints started more than 60 years ago was applied primarily to protect the drill pipe from abrasion wear. As originally designed, hard banding is a welding process whereby crushed tungsten carbide granules are dropped into a molten weld puddle made from mild steel welding wire. The idea of hard banding never envisioned the use of casing friendly welding wires as we use them today for hard banding. For the most part, all drilling was open hole or straight and casing was rarely a problem. So tungsten carbide in a mild steel matrix was the standard. Casing friendly products were developed years later as casing wear began to be a problem. For many years, the properties of casing wear and abrasion resistance were the only considerations when choosing a casing friendly hard banding product. These are properties to focus on well since they are well-established laboratory tests that can be used to try to quantify them. However, there are other properties that should be considered. Laboratory tests do not give the whole picture 
because they are tests done in controlled environments, not downhole field tests. There are other properties such as crack resistance, toughness, fatigue resistance, and reapplication characteristics that should be considered when selecting a hard banding wire. These factors are just as important, perhaps even more important. Oil and gas drilling is demanding more from drill pipe today than ever before. Highly deviated H2S gas, horizontal drilling, and HPHT wells are pushing the limits of current drill pipe design. Land drilling is much more abusive to drill pipe than offshore drilling. Wells are being drilled deeper and faster today. The hard banding must be able to survive these environments. Reapplication is essential. If not, reapplication's cost will be extremely high. If the previous hard band must be removed, the cost can increase by 300 to 400 percent. The industry has found that approvals and certifications based only on the initial first application are no guarantee of future reapplications. The material must be able to be reapplied consistently or any small gains in casing protection and abrasion resistance figures are negated. Hard banding is a welding process. As a hard band material is reapplied multiple times, there is less dilution from the base material of the tool joint. Elements inside the hard material grow in percentage and the results can be failing hard bands. Compatibility between the tool joint and hard band alloy is essential for successful reapplications. When comparing hard banding alloys, reliance on outside independent laboratories for data and third party participation for verification helps ensure unbiased interpretation of the results. Independent laboratory testing assures that all tests are performed accurately and consistently for true comparative results that can be relied on for selecting the best hard banding alloy. Taking all this into consideration, Postal Industries developed and continues to manufacture three products. Tough Band, which was developed for less abrasive environments, Duraband for extreme drilling conditions, and most recently, Ultra Band for non-mag applications. They are all casing friendly, non-cracking, and can be reapplied over themselves, but the ability to be easily applied over other products is their great, greatest characteristic. Duraband strikes the perfect balance between excellent abrasion resistance, very good casing protection, and excellent durability and fatigue resistance, and very consistent consistent reapplication. So why use Duraband? As an operator using Duraband, you have a casing friendly product that under normal drilling operations never has to be removed for reapplication. It can be reapplied over and over again without the possibility of imbalanced chemistries that can cause hard banding failure. This equates to significant reapplication savings while keeping non-productive downtime to a minimum. In addition to the reapplication savings and reduced non-productive downtime benefits, as a drilling contractor or a rental company using Duraband, you are getting the ultimate in tool joint protection without damaging the casing. This is the most cost-effective way to extend the life of your drill pipe, heavyweight drill pipe, completion tubing, and collars. We were the first manufacturer to provide a product that was independently tested and verified for application over other products. We continue to work with Friendly Proctor to maintain our current NS1 certifications and add new certifications as needed. We also have several new TH Hill reports for the reapplication of Duraband over competitive products. All hard banding wire manufacturers provide certifications for the application of their wires, but testing is not required by all. We are the first manufacturer to have an applicator improvement process that includes applicator certifications based on three levels of competency that an applicator must pass. This is a system for indicating skill and experience of our applicators. All of our 200 plus certified applicators worldwide are tested in the field and must be deemed competent and basic welding knowledge and pass a hard banding test to receive their level one certification. To achieve level two and three status, they must prepare samples, send them to our lab for testing, which includes hardness testing and magnetic particle inspection. 
We provide all the necessary testing at no charge and encourage all of our applicators to submit samples to our lab. We can provide test details and applicator levels for your area upon request. Postal Industries offers unmatched customer support through a network of nine technical centers across the globe. Dedicated personnel in each tech center can provide hard banding training anywhere in the world. These trainers are well versed in new and reapplications and can easily train and prepare hard banders for a certification process. Once training is complete, they will test and certify each location. All tech centers stock a full line of hard banding products and ship all orders within 24 hours. Certifying applicators is the start of any manufacturer's quality process, but a process for ongoing quality assurance is even more important. To help assure that our applicators are performing quality work consistently, Postal initiated a site inspection program. A site inspection starts with a request by an operator, a drilling contractor, or a rental company for us to visit one of our applicators to witness them applying our product to a customer's drill pipe. A procedure qualification record will be completed noting all parameters used during the application process. A non-compliance report will be completed along with a corrective action report if necessary. Photos will be taken throughout the process and those along with all reports will be submitted to the hard banding applicator and requester. A subsequent visit will confirm that necessary corrective measures have been followed. If not, action will be taken. This benefits both the requester and hard banding solutions by again making sure our applicators are providing high quality hard banding service on a consistent basis. All of our tech centers are capable of performing site inspections upon request. Postal Industries continues to develop new hard banding procedures and industry related tools of the trade. First of the tools is our hard band calculator which helps calculate how much wire you'll need for a particular job. Simply enter the tool joint diameter, the hard band height, hard band width, number of tool joints. Instantly, you will have the pounds or kilos, because a metric option is also available, uh, needed to complete the job. The calculator and mobile app can be found on a website at hardbandingsolutions.com. We develop HP insulators for use in slow cooling completed hard banding applications. These insulators, which are less than half the weight of a commonly used cooling can, offer the ultimate in slow cooling efficiency. They are constructed of waterproof cover, fiberglass insulation, a high temp lining, and stainless steel mesh, which makes them true insulators that do more than just fend off wind and rain. They also attach with hook and loop straps, keeping them affixed tightly against the hard band area, locking in heat and slowing the cooling process. We recently introduced the industry's first hard banding gauge and ruler. This gauge can be used to measure the height of the worn hard band to determine if it needs reapplication, along with slots to measure for minimum and maximum hard banding height. This also allows you to check the profile and the width of the hard banding. We also included a stick-out gauge on the end to aid applicators with machine setup. We developed a standard operating procedure, or SOP, for water cooling a drill pipe to protect the IPC or internal protective coating. We also developed a procedure for applying DuraBand to completion tubing. This is a simple procedure that will protect and extend the life of tubing connections. You can get a copy of these procedures by contacting any of our tech centers or again visiting our website. In conclusion, we will continue to research, develop, and test products and procedures to answer the needs of our customers. Very informative, Steve. Thanks. That builds very well on Bob's presentation. I have a couple questions, such as uh, where are the nine tech centers, for instance? Okay, we have, um, starting with our, our headquarters here in the U.S., we also have a southwest U U.S. location here in Texas. Then we also have uh, Scotland, we have Dubai, Singapore, we have Brazil, um, Colombia, South America, uh, New Zealand, and I think that covers them. 
Yeah, it covers most of the major drilling markets for sure. It's Absolutely. Kind of like the sun never sets on hard banding solutions. Huh? We have an applicator on every continent at this point. That's awesome. Uh, I had another question here, um, which was you mentioned your site inspection program. What, what have you? When did you introduce that, and what have you learned? Are you learning through that, and how does that work? We introduced site inspections uh, almost two years ago now, and it really allows us to get extra eyes and ears out in the field to help us make sure that our applicators are doing everything properly. And it actually bodes well for applicators of, of any product because they should be following the uh, manufacturer's procedures. Okay. And this allows us to double check to make sure that they are doing it consistently. All right, very good. Uh, thanks again, Steve. So uh, a key cost element in the world of hard banding, as you've heard, is application and reapplication, both from time and expense standpoints. Our next speaker is expert on this topic and will present advantages of this particular technology. Jim Allen is co-owner of Allen Inspection Services, which has been a family-owned business since February 1972. They feel that they are a company that has been built from knowledge through experience. Jim has been welding since his teenage days and has worked in the oil industry since the 80s. His goal was to be a one-stop service company for the oil business. He brought hard banding into Allen Inspection Services eight years ago, feeling that hard banding was a big part of inspection. He's been working hand-in-hand -hand with Postal Industries since adding hard banding to their list of services. Welcome, Jim. We at Allen Inspection Services have built a reputation for quality and service since 1971. We are a corporation built from knowledge through experience. Our success is a result in using the highest quality products, equipment, and trained personnel that the industry can supply. We hold a high standard to the products we bring to our customers to uphold this reputation. Performance and protection are the top priorities. With higher wear protection, the tool joints last longer, and the chance of loss of torsional capability is reduced. Casing friendly advantages reduce casing failures and ensure well control. Crack free products with the ability to reply over itself in multiple layers for extreme drilling conditions is also a high advantage. Cost effectiveness is also a great advantage to us and our customer. In not having to remove and repair previous hard band material, the cost is greatly reduced in reapplication. Savings in costly man hours and transportation to machine shops for removal is also a huge price savings. Ease of infill reapplication always translates into reduced cost to our customers. It is just as important that a hard band applicator not get complacent and careless. Cutting corners or shortcutting applications can lead to poor hard bands and failures down home. Hard band applicators must pay close attention to detail, especially when reapplying, is important to assure good, consistent results. Cutting preheat times and post-cooling times are prime areas for the shortcutting. Both can result in cracking and hard band failures. As an applicator for postal hard banding products, there are many advantages that meet our criteria. Performance and quality are the top of our list. We have also taken advantage of their R&D lab, training, tech support. Staying up to date on the latest products and procedures is another plus for us and our customer. It ensures that we use the latest techniques and procedures for the applications. To achieve consistently high performance, Postal also monitors all of their certified applicators on regular intervals. This carries a set of standards so our customer can select an applicator with the confidence that the job will be done right. We at Allen Inspection Services could never put forth the resources needed to achieve this level of a product. The research and development supplied by Postal are unequaled. Metallurgical analysis in relation with drill pipe and casing manufacturers result in next generation innovations and solutions. And last but not least is the huge support team Postal supplies. Their worldwide tech services by email, by phone, or live internet is priceless. 24-7 is the service we supply and also need from our vendors. Postal also works very closely with the manufacturers of infield welding equipment, as well as merge the gap of communication between products, equipment, and applicators. All right, thanks a lot, Jim. Could you uh, walk us through the reapplication process, please? The first step for a successful hard banding reapplication is selection of the correct hard banding wire. 
Successful hard banding in a new pipe can be achieved with most wires on the market because most new applications are done in manufacturing facilities under ideal conditions. Reapplications are a completely different story. When reapplying hard banding, first determine the previous hard banding is a viable candidate for reapplication. The existing worn hard banding must be intact with no missing chunks or large longitudinal cracks uh, and uh, less or equal to one thirty-second of an inch. Transverse cracks cannot be reapplied over. If it is determined that it's not possible to reapply over, the old hard banding must be removed, built back up, machined, or ground flush, and new hard banding then reapplied. If the part is a candidate for reapplication, the next thing to do is to determine if previous hard banding alloy was applied to ensure compatibility. There is a good record keeping comes into play and can save valuable time and money. This is where good record keeping comes into play and can save valuable time and money. Hard banding over unidentified previous hard band requires products that have a wide range of compatibility and may be necessary. Machine setup should be done per wire manufacturer's recommendation. Adjustments must be made such as gas flow to accommodate various weather variables. Once settings are complete, it's time to prepare the part for hard banding. Pre preparation is another very important part of the process, whether it be a new application or a reapplication. All surface contaminants, including phosphate, must be completely removed by grinding or buffing. Once the part is clean, it's ready for preheating. A good soak heat is necessary for successful application. Apply heat to the surface rotating the pipe every few minutes to ensure a uniform heat around and through the tool joint. Heat the part to the recommended preheat temperature, checking the temperature frequently. Once the proper preheat is attained, immediately check the pipe. This must be done quickly to maintain proper application preheat temperature. The welding process is next. Torch height and angle adjustments may need to be made during the process. The hard band operator should be observing, observing the application and making adjustments on the fly. Once complete, an insulator or cooling can should be installed over the hard band area to start slow cooling. That is the condensed version of hard banding process. We prefer to use the postal line of products including Duraband, Tuckband, and Ultraband because their compatibility, characteristics, and product track history, consistency, and applicator support. Thanks very much, Jim. Appreciate it. Uh, I've learned a lot, of, gained a lot of insights as to hard banding and application reapplication. Uh, now let's uh, open the floor for discussion. So, Jim, let's start with you. But Steve and Bob, please feel free to uh, jump in anytime. So I heard, I thought I heard you say that it, you couldn't really reapply over tra traverse cracks. How is that different from uh, longitudinal? Well, transverse cracks uh, run around the tool joint tend to be a stress riser to the tool joint. Uh, the, the more criteria um, stress risers that we try to uh, completely reject in, in tubulars. Transverse being not associated so with that, but uh, with postal products, we really don't have to worry about either one. Because uh, the way I understand it, um, postal's products don't really, doesn't really crack, is that? That's right, crack? it's a non-cracking, yeah. stable product, and it's very user-friendly for us. Good to know, good to know. So Steve, let's turn to you. What, what is a typical cool down time? We try to get an average of 50 degrees per hour over an eight hour period. Um, so it's, it's difficult to really do that in the field, especially in, in the frigid conditions of, of the northern part of the U.S. and in parts of Siberia mm -hmm. and so forth. So what we like to do is, uh, you know, typically an applicator will use 10 to 12 or carry 10 to 12 cooling cans or HB insulators on their trailer. Uh, by the time they get to that 13th joint, so they use their 12, by the time they get to the 13th joint, they usually will take the first one off um, and bring it back and use it on the, the last one that was hard banded. When they do that, we recommend covering the end just to keep off the elements. It should be fine as far as the cool down period at that point. Um, but again, we do try to get 50, 40 to 50 degrees per hour average over an eight hour period. Very good. Thanks a lot, Steve. Appreciate it. So why is this important? Yeah. Well, from a metallurgical standpoint, we're always concerned about not only the hard banding itself, but the 
tool joint itself. And the sure. heat affected zone is part of the tool joint. When you heat up the immediate area beneath the arc, now you're introducing heat that changes the structure of the tool joint. And what we need to do is slow cool through that change back into a hard structure. We need to make sure that that structure that occurs at room temperature is the structure that we want, and therefore we need slow cooling. Okay. Is it possible to uh, damage uh, tool joints applying, um, if, if hard facing or hard banding is applied improperly? Yes, I mean, you can if you quench it. For example, if you don't use uh, a slow cooling process, you will damage the heat affected zone. And what that does is, uh, if any cracks occur in the field, uh, they will not be blunted by this heat affected zone, which is too hard, it's too brittle. Okay. And it'll travel right into the base material itself and uh, could cause catastrophic failures. That would not be a good thing for our drilling threat. Not, not a good thing. What about the band height? Um, how can you tell what the maximum is allowed before it can be re hard banded? Well, typically you want 1 32nd of an inch or less uh, before you can go ahead and do a reapplication. If you are trying to, if you try to reapply products over hard band, existing hard bands over 32nd of an inch, you stand a chance of delaminating the, uh, the old hard banding and you're going to wind up with, again, catastrophic failure. So 32nd of an inch or less, uh, preferably flush, and then you reapply to 3 seconds proud to a maximum of a 1 8 inch proud. And that's the typical hard bands. And as Bob mentioned earlier, there's usually, or typically three bands on the box end and an inch and a half band on the pin end. Okay. All right, can thanks. I, yep. Can I piggyback into Absolutely. that? Absolutely, jump right in. Yes, uh, well, their band has been designed so that the one thirty second rule, if you're putting Duraband on top of Duraband, is null and void. In other words, you could have a full three thirty second and put another layer right on top of it. It's designed to do that, and therefore, when the string comes out, and let's say you have a number of joints that are eh, not quite a thirty second and some that are over the thirty second, it doesn't matter. You can choose the ones that are over the thirty second and go ahead and uh, hard band. All right. Thanks very much. And if I could add to that, sure. uh, one of the great uh, advantages that uh, with Postal being able to reapply over itself has given us the ability to give our customers much more material you know, to complete the wells and without having to trip out, lay down, and resurface mm -hmm. it so more often. So it's been a, a great advantage. That's great. Sounds like it's doing really excellent things out in the field. So, gentlemen, thanks very much for all your comments. I'm, I'm curious, though, you have a lot of field experience, and what kind of misconceptions do you uh, hear uh, from your customers about, or even your customers' customers out in, the, out in the field? Bob, can we start with you? Yeah, I think probably the biggest misconception I've run up against is that all hard bandings crack, uh, when in fact that's not true. I mean, our products are designed not to crack. We have 40 years' experience in this business, and we understand what makes alloys crack and what makes them not crack. But that's the biggest misconception, that, that you simply don't realize that there is such a thing as a non-cracking product. And incidentally, the Duraband that has an NC behind it, the NC stands for non-cracking, mm -hmm. as well as Tough Band NC stands for non-cracking. Okay, I wondered about that. Steve, do you have anything to add? What misconceptions do you run, run into? Yeah, mine is, uh, is really dealing with the, uh, the applicators themselves. Um, there is no perfect reapplication. In other words, if you're doing, as was mentioned earlier, if you're doing new pipe in a controlled environment, things are pretty easy. And it's pretty easy to apply the product. You can almost set it and forget it. When you're doing reapplications, it's a whole different story. And an applicator should never walk away from the unit when he's hard banding. You need to pay attention and watch because there are no two perfect applications and no two are going to run alike. So it's really imperative that they stay on the machine, watch what they're doing. They usually run two-man crews, that's what we recommend, give me two people out there just to eliminate the fatigue factor and also to keep a set of eyes on that weld as it's, as it's going on. Okay, thanks Steve. Jim, do you have anything to toss in us? You know, I think one of the biggest uh, ones that I have would be uh, the 
the thought that uh, no hard band is casing friendly. Um, it's it's very not true. Uh, it causes more surface contact with the casing. Um, the compliant metals tend to gall and actually promote casing wear and damage. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would say that's probably the biggest misconception. Okay, thanks, Jim, Bob, and Steve. That's uh, a good wrap up for our session today. And uh, that's about all the time we have for folks. I'd like to thank our panelists, uh, Jim Allen, Allen Inspection, and Bob Miller and Steve Safonsik from uh, Postal Industries, Hard Banding Solutions. They had very useful presentations, and uh, please come back anytime and view them again. Also, thanks very much to Hard Banding Solutions for graciously sponsoring this uh, webcast. And please be sure to submit any questions you'd wish through the webcast page. We'll post answers as promptly as possible and notify everyone out there who's watched. So uh, this virtual panel discussion will be posted here on drillingcontractor.org for the next year, so feel free to return and tell your colleagues. Finally, on behalf of drillingcontractor.org, thanks for tuning into this event. Stay safe, keep turning to the right. I'm Mike Kilalea, we'll see you next time.